Good morning, folks. We've got a couple key items to hit today. Weather, plasma physics, climate, and the space weather health connection. As you can see, we're starting with our star. There was a bit of filament activity around the limbs the last day. But as we come to spaceweathernews.com and watch the last 24 hours and 193 angstroms, we find only small bright points, no real active regions. And the remaining coronal holes are pretty patchy and spread across the heliographic latitudes. The solar wind is exceptionally quiet. Density and plasma speed are calm and within normal range. Phi angle flipped a little bit last night, which is where the KP index rose a tick, never making it out of the green, however. Well, folks, I live pretty much right in the middle of that. It was a rough couple of minutes, but that's about it. Standing under my porch, I reached out to snag this. There were some considerably larger ones, but I wasn't going out there. As we watch the last day of energetic return on GO-16, you see the system charge up coming off the mountains in Colorado and then feeding into that line of storms cutting through the Midwest, still ongoing in the remnants this morning. Quick check in on Ireland next, and something that actually applies to all northern European coastal regions. Deeper looks into the tsunami risk from various landslides at various portions of the undersea geography nearby. But let's go out to space next and go with an aesthetic shot of the Knife Edge galaxy. While thought to be a spiral just like our Milky Way, NGC 5907 here is viewed edge on from our perspective, providing little more than a thin line of light in the heavens. Up next, a powerful statement from the Lawrence Livermore National Lab on the importance of plasma physics at high energy density. Now we're talking Parat. Included in their work group is the military plasma physics group that is making UFOs and God knows what other kind of weapons and gadgets. Coming back to their patent we put in the plasma cosmology movie, the top tech of theirs we get to know about only works, they say, because we live in a plasma universe, which makes you wonder why the NSF gives millions to dark matter searches. But anyway, moving on, that's especially true when those scientists have to keep going back and revising what they thought they knew about the small particles. In this case, they used an accelerator to form that high energy moment, and while it did create the astrophysical-like jet they expected, the particle behavior was not what they expected. Spin happy little particles. Coming down the stretch, we're at climate.gov for their recent How Hot Has Earth Been article. It is indeed worth noting how much cooler the Earth is now than just a few million years ago, a blink in geologic time. And let's recall that during those warmer periods, that's when the Earth exploded with life. Turns out things don't like ice ages and freezing to death. We're currently at some of the colder periods in the planet's long history, despite what you hear them tell us about the last few hundred or thousand years. Give me a break. Last but not least, we've recently been discussing clouds, aerosols, cosmic rays, and atmospheric electricity, and how that space energy plays a key role in the modulation of the global electric circuit. Well, folks, a considerable review has taken theory beyond scratch paper and noted considerable geopotential and potential gradient changes, potential meaning electrical charge, and saw how it was modulated with the weather and the electric excitement of Earth, the Schumann frequencies. Now, true enough. This is very important, observers. The Schumann stuff that you're seeing online these days is mostly garbage. There are daily, seasonal, lunar, annual, and solar cycle modulations of the various expected resonance peaks, and not only are they following the expected patterns for this time, but all modulation of them I see people screaming about online is either nearby lightning, solar wind influence, or the data dropouts at the Russian stations. The things they say about it are nonsense. I see many of you repeating them in the comment sections and in other places online, and that's before you recall that a few miles from the station, that reading doesn't apply to you at all. It's useless. However, since they are so easily tweaked by anything involving atmospheric electricity, they are an excellent canary for when space weather is having a direct effect on the atmospheric electricity and therefore the health of the biosphere. It's just that it's a concurrent signal, those Schumann frequencies, not the cause of the changes in biology. But either way, glad to get that out and solidify that all those aspects of the global electric circuit that are real, and which we've discussed, are indeed trackable using the remote sensing of the Earth environment that we already have, and that does include the Schumann resonances. In addition to real-time solar flare, earthquake, and geomagnetic storm alerts, our disaster prediction app is the only space weather health alert system on the planet. We've got your wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun.
Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.